This morning on our special week-long series, TV Guide at 50, we take a look at 50 years of covers. On April 3rd, 1953, TV Guide debuted with an exclusive photo of Lucille Ball's new baby boy, Desi Arnaz IV. Now, you're getting a look, an exclusive look, at the cover of the first issue, kicking off the 50th anniversary celebration of TV Guide. This hits the stands next week. Stephen Redcliffe is the editor-in-chief of TV Guide. Stephen, welcome back. Good to see you. Good to see you. Happy birthday, all that stuff. <laughs> and to you. When we talk about the covers, I mean, obviously, covers sell the magazine. So you want it to be something that's going to grab attention. What other rules go into deciding who's on the cover? Well, you really want to know who people are curious about. Uh, whether it's a TV star of a big show or somebody who's got a big special, you've got to have a curiosity. You have to say, I want to know more about that person or I have to know the secrets of that show. But you want the person people are talking about at that moment, and yet you've got to plan these covers somewhat in advance, which is tricky. Well, you know, you're, you're watching a lot of shows and you're looking at ratings and you're listening to a lot of people and everybody's saying, oh, you know, you've got to see this Lucy show. It's really funny, which of course was the case in the 50s, or you're not going to believe what happened on ER last night. All right. So back in the 50s when TV Guide first came to market and you put movie star and the show was genuinely funny, she was genuinely funny, and a birth on TV was a first. And she holds the record for the most times on the cover of the magazine. She does. She's the champ. And we even celebrated her 50th anniversary with a set of eight covers last fall. The number one selling TV Guide cover of all time, this one surprised me, Carl Malden and Michael Douglas. Well, I think it was Michael Douglas probably had a whole lot to do with that. He was the Justin Timberlake of his day. He was, uh, he was a hottie before there were hotties. So this was Streets of San Francisco at its hottest. It was. And TV was really, network TV was at its height. There were just a huge, huge viewership for network TV. Most of the time, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, most of the time it's a photograph on the cover. But on other occasions, you have commissioned artists to do the covers. For example, Abe Hirschfeld. Absolutely. Hirschfeld has the record for the most illustrated covers uh, from the 50s and 60s to the Farewell to Seinfeld, uh, which were huge, huge sellers. This, uh, they, they were the Beatles of TV at that time. A lot of big names in the art world. Andy Warhol did Get Smart. Yeah, Barbara Felton, very cool. You had Salvador Dali doing Thumbs Up. And I think that's Hugh Downs in one of those thumbs. Exactly right. Yeah. And Norman Rockwell doing Johnny Carson. Two great American icons uh, meeting on the cover of TV Guide. Pretty cool. Speaking of Norman Rockwell, who was the all-American artist, the, the magazine cover is generally all-American. It, it's, you know, wholesome. But from time to time, you do something a little edgier. Let me show an example of some of those, and we'll talk about them. For example, the Terry Hatcher cover. We can see that. Okay. The Janet Jackson cover. Britney Spears. And Pamela Anderson. Now, as the all-American television magazine, Stephen, did you get complaints for those covers? Well, you know, you get some, but uh, TV was in a va 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 voom era. There's no doubt about it. Terry Hatcher was an Internet sensation right when the Internet was starting to take off. And, you know, Britney is uh, extremely popular, to say the least. But you could turn on TV any, any time of the day and find a lot of stuff you never expected to see. So you're going to gonna tell me that you put those pictures on the cover because TV, TV was in this certain kind of period, not because sales were dipping at the magazine? Well, I'm going to tell you, you want to sell covers all the time. You want people to watch your show and you want people to buy your magazine. So uh, it certainly reflected TV, but if we sold some along the way, we weren't unhappy. Did those four covers do well? They all did great. What a shock, they right? They did great. Regional covers, TV Guide was the first to come up with those. Explain what they are. Well, we do uh, covers primarily for sports, sports stars, sports heroes uh, in various cities around the country. We uh, can do those in different places. So when the Lakers win the championship, we'll be right out there with, uh, with Lakers covers of Shaq and Kobe and so the other So wait a stars. second then. So if the Lakers win the championship on the West Coast, they're going to see Shaq and Kobe. That's right. What are they going to see on the East Coast? Well, you'd uh, hope that it would be the Knicks one year, but uh, not this year. But I'm but, saying uh, during the week that Shaq and Kobe are on the cover in the West Coast, is it the same thing on the East Coast? No, you'll get something else. You'll, uh, you'll usually get a primetime TV star. And have you found that that boosted sales in the, in the various regions of the country? Unbelievable. Countries? It's a, a people, people love their sports teams, and they go nuts for these covers. One of the ways you know that the magazine has become an American icon is that, that some of the covers have become collectibles. Tell me about some of those. Well, they are collectibles because people love TV. They want keepsakes. They want a souvenir. They want something that brings back a warm memory. If you love Star Trek, uh, we'll give you Star Trek covers. Uh, but also the covers throughout the years, especially Superman, any animated covers, Mickey Mouse, those kinds of things, like all collectibles, they gain in value over the years with scarcity. How do, what does it make you think when you, when you log on to eBay 
and you see some issues of the magazine actually up for auction on well, eBay. Well, we wish we owned a lot more of them. <laughs> and, uh, so you know, you're not putting them on eBay? No, we're not. Not yet. But uh, it's, it's funny because you do take a look right away and see if some of the covers you've done in the last year are fetching a pretty good price. And if they are, you think you've done something right. I mentioned before that Carl Malden and Michael Douglas on the cover, that's the number one selling issue. What are some of the flops? Well, uh, Young Hollywood in Love last summer didn't do particularly well. Uh, we had uh, Justin uh, Timberlake and Britney Spears on the cover, and uh, maybe people didn't really buy that they were that much in love. So it turns out they weren't. Yes, well, well, maybe they were for a while, but you know, <laughs> things change. So is it possible that when an, an actor who could be red hot on television doesn't necessarily sell magazines? Yes, it does happen sometimes. It happens rarely. Generally speaking, if you've got a hot show and a hot star, that's going to do pretty well. Is there any such thing as the TV Guide curse? Like the Sports <laughs> Illustrated curse where bad things happen to people who appear on the cover? Actually, I think it works the other way. I think good things happen to people who are on the cover, and uh, that's been true for, for 50 years. Well, Stephen Radcliffe, good luck. Congratulations well, on the anniversary, much. and we appreciate you coming in. Thanks a lot. And tomorrow we'll wrap up our TV Guide anniversary celebration with a look at the magazine's future. Up next...